All right, welcome to LTHS Physics. Uh, this is going to be an example uh, using work energy considerations, and we're going to find work done by various forces on a mass being pushed up an incline. Uh, it's being pushed at an angle that's it's being pushed with a force that's not parallel to the incline, and there is friction. So uh, the example would look like this. You've got an incline. at some angle to the horizontal, and we will uh, give numbers on this one. Uh, we got a, a block, it's got a mass M. It's being pushed this way with a force, we'll call the force P, pushed, okay? And there's a coefficient of kinetic friction, it is sliding, uh, we'll call that mu sub K. And um, here are the numbers, okay? Uh, the push is 20 newtons. The distance we're going to go, so we're going to go from here to here, that'll be distance along the incline. That distance is 5 meters. The coefficient of sliding friction is 0.4. The angle is 25 degrees with the horizontal. And the mass is 2 kilograms. Okay. We're going to find the following. Work done by the push force. Work done by the force of friction. The work done by gravity. The work done by the normal force. And then the network. Okay, so we're going to find the work done by all four of the forces acting on the object and then also the network. Um, and that's our goal. Okay. All right, so like with most problems that have multiple forces, you start with an FPD. So, uh, there's our object, the force is acting on it, we've got P, we have the normal force, which is about that way. Uh, if it's sliding up the incline, there's friction, friction will act down the incline. And then we've got Mg, the force of gravity. So there's your four forces. Um, like with any other problem, we want to split our forces up into two components, parallel to and perpendicular to the motion. For us, that's perpendicular and that's parallel. So FF and FN are all good. I've got to split MG and P into components. So I'm going to redraw my FBD here. Uh, I'll redraw FN, redraw FF. Okay. For the components of mg, we got a component perpendicular to the incline, that's mg cosine theta. We have a component parallel to the incline, that's mg sine of theta. And then we've got two components of p. The component of p that's parallel to the incline, well, this theta is congruent to that theta. We want the adjacent leg, which is cosine. So this will be p cosine of theta, and then part of that uh, push force kind of presses the box down to the incline a little bit, that's this way, that's P sine theta. So you've got to have your good uh, skill set on drawing FBDs before you can approach this problem. Okay? Now, um, we can find numbers for all these forces. We're going to do that. Okay? So first force is, uh, we know Mg, uh, Mg cosine theta is if you do 2 times 9.8 times cosine 25, you get 17.8. Uh, mg sine theta, that's 2 times 9.8 times sine of 25, you get 8.28. Okay. Uh, P cosine theta, if you just do uh, 20 times cosine 25, you get 18.1. For P sine of theta, you just do uh, 20 times sine of 25, and you get 8.45, okay? And then uh, the normal force, well, we know the block is not accelerating away from the incline or crashing through the incline. So we know that the normal force has to equal the sum of these two. So if you just add these two together, you get 26.2 newtons. Okay. Finally, friction. So that one I'll write down. So force of friction is mu F 
n. Well, we got fn and we got mu. So you just take 0.4 times your 26.2 and you get about 10.5. So now we've got every force acting on the block and we have the magnitude of every force acting on the block. To find work done by each force, you just use for, or work is force dot displacement. Okay, so I'll start with P. The work done by P is P dot displacement. So the easy way to do this is to look and see, okay, is which component of P is parallel to the displacement? Well, in this case, we got P cosine theta. That's our parallel component. And um, is it going to give positive or negative work? Is it in the same direction as the motion, or is it in the opposite direction of the motion? In this case, it's in the same direction as the motion, so it's going to do positive work. So, I write a positive, and then it's P cosine theta, which I know, that's 18.1, uh, times delta x, or distance, which is 5. So I'll put a D there, but then we do uh, 18.1, times 5, and you get 90.5 joules, and that's positive. So that's the work done by the push force. For all the other ones, it's the same process. You're just um, you're putting different numbers in, and you're being very careful with plus and minus. But otherwise, it's the same process. So work done by the force of friction would be the force of friction dot delta x. Well, for this one, Friction is in the direction, uh, parallel to the direction of motion, but it's pointing the opposite way. We're moving up the incline, the friction's pointing down the incline. So friction's going to do negative work. So my dot product will be negative. One way to look at it is some people say, okay, it's F times D times cosine of 180, but personally, I don't think you need to do that. You just recognize that the force is that way, displacement's that way, that's going to give you negative work. Okay, so I write negative, the force of friction, which is 10.5, times our distance, which is 5, and you get negative 52.5 joules. So that's the work done by friction. Through a similar process, we'll do the work done by gravity. Oop, that marker ain't working. <laughs> All right. Work done by gravity equals the force of gravity, dot delta x. So you ask yourself the same question. Which component of gravity is parallel to, to the, the direction of motion? Well, it's, it's mg sine theta, which is 8.28. It's doing plus or minus work. Well, again, the motion's that way, but mg sine theta points the opposite way, so it's negative work. So that's negative uh, 8.28 times 5. And if you do that, you get negative 41.4 joules. All right, the last individual force is the normal force. The work done by the normal force. Well, that equals the normal force dot delta x. So what's that? Well, the normal force is perpendicular to the motion. That's your answer. Any force that's perpendicular to the motion does no work. So the work done by the normal force is simply zero joules. All right, and then the last thing we asked for was the network done on the crate. So all you have to do is add your four numbers together. The work done by the push, friction, gravity, and normal. So you're going to take 90.5 minus 52.5 minus 41.4 plus zero. And if you do all that, your network is negative, and it's just, it's kind of small, 3.4 joules. So finally, what if they said something like this? What does that mean? Why is the work negative? What's happening to the crate? Well, it simply means there's more energy being taken away from it than added to it. Okay, if you do a net force thing, these two forces are slightly bigger than P cosine theta. So the crate is slowing down. The network on its negative is slowing down. And this would be a pretty gradual slowdown. Um, so that's what the negative sign means. So one 
good aspect here is to learn what does a plus and minus mean with energy. In this case, network is negative, where, where the box is slowing down. It's going to lose kinetic energy. All right, so that's an example with uh, an incline uh, with multiple forces on an object using work energy considerations. Thank you.